lesson 100. <laughs> 100 lessons. That's always exciting. Let's get started with excuse me, our vocabulary. Our first uh, part is our prefix focus. We're focusing on the Greek prefix, well, the Greek word biblion. And from that, we get our Greek prefix of biblio. Think about what that word looks like. Looks like Bible, right? And what kind of book is the Bible? Well, it's a book. <laughs> I didn't mean to say it that way. The Bible is a book. And so <clears throat> that means that this word is our word for book. This prefix means book. So every time you see biblio, think something related to book. So our first word is bibliography. Well, we know that graphy has to do with write. So what is bibliography? Something about writing books. It's a list of books compiled on a common principle. So if you have a bunch of books about a certain subject, that is your bibliography. and You would write out that list. This is your bibliography about reptiles or whatever. When you write a paper and you need to write the sources that you used to get more information about your paper, about the information in your paper, you have to list out whatever sources you used, you studied and looked at and you quoted. And that is your bibliography, your list of books. So, for example, most research papers include a bibliography. Biblioclast. Something to do with books. What do you think? That would be a person who mutilates and destroys books. Mutilate is a word for meaning that you, you mess up and, and destroy, basically. For example, the biblioclast stripped out meaningful pages from several books. Bibliophile. Okay, this is another type of person. So if a biblioclast destroys books, what do you think a bibliophile does? This is a person who loves and collects books. You know a bibliophile. Did you know that? Who do you think you know that's a bibliophile? Miss Haley. For example, the bibliophile collected every book by Mark Twain. Miss Haley is like that, except she collects them by Nicholas Sparks, Soho Moyes, people like that. Filling in the correct vocabulary word in the blank. Sentence number one. The blank viewed books as beautiful sources of literary expression. So what that sentence is saying is that that person saw books, so they um, believed in books, they think about books as beautiful uh, ways to express oneself in writing, in forms of writing. So what kind of person would that be? That blank must pay for damaging the books. So if someone is destroyendo the books, what kind of person would that be? The Greek root meaning book is blank. We will list the sources for our research paper in a blank. Okay, number one would be the bibliophile, someone who loves books, would see them as beautiful sources of literary expression. By the way, um, the word philo, I don't remember if we studied that or not, um, that has to do with love. So book love is basically what that word would literally translate to, so a book lover. Uh, number two, biblioclast would be the kind of person who would damage books. Number three, biblion, biblion, or if you wrote biblio, that's fine. Number four, bibliography. Bibliography would be where you would list the sources. All right, let's talk about your writing page for today. Personal voice. When you write, you should use a style that is natural and comfortable for you. A style that is the way you would particularly speak. You don't want to force yourself as you're writing. Don't use words that you would not normally say, especially if you don't even know what those words mean. You can't, you can't be sure you're even using them correctly if you don't know what they mean. So 
So don't use words that you would not normally say, especially if you don't know what those words mean. Stay professional in your formal writing, but use your personal style of speaking in your writing. So make sure that you're not using words that would be considered unprofessional, like contractions and things like that, but you do want to use your own personal style of speaking, your own personal vocabulary, words that you know what they mean, words that you would normally say, and use the way, use the style that you would say it in, your own tone and expression. So look at your paper. We have a seventh grade student was alarmed when the mayor announced plans to build a garage for city trucks on neighborhood parklands. Read this letter she wrote to the mayor. Notice how she revised it to express her true personal voice. The annotations in the boxes will help you analyze her revisions. So you see in the first part she wrote, many citizens are upset about having a city garage on Savin Street instead of a park. Well, she thought about it. Really, what she would say to the mayor would be, can't the city find a place for a new garage without destroying our Savin Street? So something like that. That's how she would really want to express herself. Now let's look at the next sentence. Neighborhood children visit it often. The words that she has right now, they don't, they are very formal and not really in the style that a student would say it. So a student would say something more like, neighborhood kids play there every day. A student would use the word kids more than they would use the word children. And they don't just visit it, they're playing there. And they don't, and a student really wouldn't use the word often, you would say every day, right? Let's look at the next sentence. Adults seem to appreciate the shade. Again, very formal, a little awkward in the way it's worded. So better would be adults sit and talk or read or just enjoy the shade. So this shows sites that this particular student has seen, sites this person has noticed. Savin Street Park is green and beautiful in our gray and noisy city. Again, does that sound like something a seventh grader would say? Not so much. Better would be, it's a tiny patch of green in our gray and noisy city. This kind of uh, describes the, the park a little bit more. And the last sentence, please reconsider your plans for our park. Well, that's just kind of like, eh, if you want to. So the student changes it to make a real plea. So that's like a really asking, buscando for help. We need our park is what she changes it to. So instead of saying, let me read the paragraph again. Many citizens are upset about having a garage on Savin Street instead of a park. Neighborhood children visit it often. Adults seem to appreciate the shade. Savin Street Park is green and beautiful in our gray and noisy city. Please reconsider your plans for our park. Very formal, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's not really the style of a seventh grader. So a more personal style is, can't the city find a place for a new garage without destroying our Savin Street Park? Neighborhood kids play there every day. Adults sit and talk or read or just enjoy the shade. It's a tiny patch of green in our gray and noisy city. We need our park. That changes it to make it more the style of a student. So that's what we mean when you wanna write in your personal voice. So what do you need to do? For your homework, you need to complete personal voice page 90. And this is what you have as your direction. Now, Saeed, I know you in particular, um, in this section over here, your words are kind of whited out. I think it's just Saeed, but maybe all of you. So pay special attention right here so you know exactly what those words are supposed to be. So your directions say, revising to express personal voice. Read the following paragraph from a letter written by a student to the school board. The school board is like the, a group of people who make sure they make decisions for a school, okay? So it, here it would be kind of like all your teachers. Assume that you are writing that, assume, bleh, sorry, let me try that again. Assume that you are writing this letter. Revise the paragraph to express your personal voice. Use your own paper if necessary. So let's look at the paragraph. The proposal to eliminate, that means get rid of, the band program at school because of budget, because of budget needs, makes many students, including me, very unhappy. 
Budget needs talks about the money that you would need to spend. The quality of life at school will diminish. That means go down, will be lower, will not be as good. If this proposal is approved, that means if the proposal to get rid of the band program is said, yes, we will do that. Participating in the band program increases students' knowledge about music. At athletic contests, that would be sports things, sports competitions, the band helps build school spirit, something that no amount of money can buy. Please decide to retain the band program. Retain means to keep. Okay, so now you need to write this paragraph using your voice, how you would express it. And it's fine if there's some things that you wouldn't change. Just like in the one with the girl, there were certain things that were, stayed the same. She only changed, um, you know, what didn't really sound like her. So you can change, um, you definitely need to change whatever you would not personally say. So any words that you feel like, yeah, I wouldn't use that word because I don't really know that word, change it to something else. Change it to your style. You have lines there on your paper that you can rewrite it, but if you need more room, you can always write it on another piece of paper. Just make sure you label it well. All right, that's it for today. Have a great day, guys. Thank you very much. Bye.